here we are back at our fire lay uh, with the bottle of water that we collected from the stream. Now the very first thing you're going to want to do is take the lid off of this. You don't ever want to boil water uh, with your screwed on lid on there. Uh, as the water starts expanding uh, and as it starts, um, the steam starts flowing, you could actually explode this. Uh, either the lid could pop off, you could blow the side out of your bottle, but uh, even if you didn't ruin your bottle, it's still a hazard of, you know, pieces flying around, your fire flying around. So just make sure you take your lid off. Now, another thing you want to make sure you do is have a nice flat spot in here for your bottle. Because once we get the fire going around it, we don't want to have to move that bottle any more than we have to because you take a chance of tipping it over. Now, uh, I said not to have your screw on cap on there, but if you happen to have one of these, um, it's just a stainless steel drinking cup that I carry with me. What you can do is you can actually put that on top. Now it's not a tight seal, so what's going to happen when the steam comes, it's going to be able to escape out around it. You do have to be careful with this. Uh, it has some benefits. One of them is it's going to keep the, keep the ash and the dirt and the bark out of your drinking water, but that's not really a big deal. Uh, if you have your uh, cotton bandana or some cloth or your sock or whatever you use to strain the water to get it out of the stream, you can also put it back through this to strain out any pieces of ash or whatever in there. But uh, a little bit of that ash or bark isn't going to hurt you. You know, you can even just dump it off the top. Uh, one of the other benefits, this will help it boil just a little bit faster because it's going to uh, keep the heat in there, not let as much of it escape. Now the downside of this is, especially if it has handles on here, when we get our fire going, we're going to pull our fire down over this and it has a tendency to hit on these handles or it can hit on the lid and you have a chance of tipping your water bottle over. The other thing is you can't really tell for sure if your water is boiling, so you're going to have to remove this cup at some point and you have a chance of tipping your water over. For me, I don't like to put that on there. I don't think uh, the benefits outweigh the disadvantages of it, so I'm not going to do that today. But I wanted to let you know that that was an option out there. So what I'm going to do is I have uh, some nice uh, yellow birch that I found. And what we're going to do is I'm going to use my ferro rod. I'm going to start a ferro rod fire. I'm going to use this as my tinder bundle. Once I get it uh, ignited, I'm going to stick it in here with some where I already have some other birch bark. I'm going to pull that in. Once I get the fire going, I'm going to pull my smalls down over that. Now let me talk about the smalls here just for a second. Um, when I say that, what I mean are sticks or twigs or branches that are like a pencil size or smaller. Because what we want for this fire is we want this thing to burn fast and hot. We're basically saying that, you know, we're hiking on the trail, we ran out of water, so we need to get some more purified water for us to drink. So this isn't where we're making camp for the night. We just want to boil this water and then cool it down and be able to move on. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to keep this fire small, but we're going to have it burning fast and hot. We want to boil this water as quick as we can. So we have a nice handful of smalls here to start. But you can see I have a nice bigger pile over here. Once I get the fire going, I'm going to put some more on here. And I'm going to try to keep this as close to the water bottle as I can so that it really, um, all the, the heat goes right to the bottle and doesn't, not burn an outside of it. So we're going to go ahead here. And I do have my birch bark here down on a piece of, another piece of bark to keep it up off the ground and to keep it all together here. Bark, you usually once you get some flame, you're usually okay. It's going to just keep burning. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to stick it in here, and I'm going to pull some of this others that I have, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my smalls and I'm going to pull them right down over this and pull them in there. Remember to keep an eye on your bottle. You don't knock your bottle over while you're doing this part of it here. And one thing you could do too, if you found a nice flat rock, you can put it in there and put your bottle on top of that. Uh, that might help keep, steadily, keep it steady a little bit. Just make sure you don't pick the rock out of the stream because you don't want to get rocks that uh, have a lot of water in them that could possibly explode when they're in the fire. So, I have this fire going. I'm going to put some in here around this. I'm going to try to keep this fire all around it so it boils a little faster. Another thing I could do to have some other pieces of birch here. I could uh, get them ignited. I'm 
Once they're burning, I can move it over here to the other side so I can get this fire going the whole way around it. Now, if you have some fear of fire, um, you got to kind of get over that here a little because you're going to need to keep moving this fire. You want to keep it condensed in around the bottle, and you're going to need to keep adding stuff to it. So, you know, as you can see, I'm pretty close to this fire. I am you know, going to be careful, but I also need to be comfortable around this moving uh, the twigs and the sticks around. As you can see, uh, it's burning really well on one side. I'm trying to get it over to the other side here a little bit just so it's around the bottle burning. So like I said, just want this thing to burn hot and fast, get that water boiling, and hopefully the fire will be just about out or, you know, be getting down to where we can put it out pretty easily to get our bottle out of there and get it cooled down. So this is burning pretty well. I'm going to back up a little bit. It's getting kind of hot. I do want to keep an eye on my bottle in there, make sure it doesn't tip over uh, as it's burning. I have a nice long stick to kind of be poking in the top of it, which that's also something you can't really do uh, whenever you have that cup on there. It's really hard to manipulate this water bottle if you have to. I don't know if you'll be able to tell from there because the fire's still pretty hot, but uh, that water's already boiling in there. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try to pull this away a little bit. Maybe you can see that. I don't know, but yeah, it was definitely a full rolling boil, and that's what you want. You know, down here in the a little snow to get that down a little bit. So down here, here in the lower elevation. Once you get your uh, water to a full rolling boil, uh, that's okay. That makes that's uh, enough uh, to make it purified. And what you want to do is you want to not boil it any longer. And you have to because that's just losing water out of it, you know, the longer that it boils. Now, if you're in a higher elevation, you need to uh, keep it boiling a little bit longer. Um, I think it uh, might have been uh, 5,000 feet. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. But if you're in a higher elevation, water boils at a lower temperature. So you need to keep it boiling a little bit longer to uh, make sure that it's purified. So here we go. I'm going to get this fire out a little bit so I can get in there. As you can see, it didn't really take too long. I had a really hot fire going there. And now, so earlier, you know, I had my leather gloves, but I am not going to reach in here with my leather gloves and try to pick that thing up. Um, I mean, that water's 212 degrees, the steam coming out of it, and the bottle itself is just super heated. So uh, even with leather gloves, I'm not gonna wanna grab a hold of that because as soon as it starts burning my hand, I'm probably gonna drop it and then I gotta start this process all over again. So there are a couple things, a couple ways to do this. One of the things that I carry with me um, this is called a fish mouth spreader and really all it is is kind of just a big spring that when you open it it uh, sp spreads open so if you as long as you have an inner lip on your water bottle or your water container I can put this down in here spread it out and then I can lift this up and I'm still I'm gonna be very careful because this is super heated and see now I can move this out of the fire and what I would probably do is you know, I make a little spot here in the snow. I'm going to bring this over, set it down in the snow, to let it cool down. 
before I do that, I want to show you, just in case you don't have one of these uh, mouse spreaders with you, and I would tell you too, don't leave this in when it's uh, in the fire because then it's going to be just as hot as the bottle and you're not going to be able to use it to pick it out. So, and it just very compact, very small. But let's say you don't have that with you. Here's something else you could do. Uh, you have to make sure you cut this before you uh, put the bottle in the fire so that you know the right length. But basically what I did was I just took a small twig and uh, I wouldn't recommend using anything dead. Make sure you get something alive so that it's a little sturdier and a little stronger. And I put a piece of bank line on it. You could use paracord, whatever string that you have. Now, you want to make sure the fire is out around there because you don't want to get your string. You don't want it to get melted in here. The second thing you want to do is you want to make this about the diameter of the big part of your bottle. And then I have, you know, just some little points I sharpened on the ends here just to help it grab while it's in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my bank line is pretty centered on this because when you go to lift this up out, you, you want it to be in the center of this so that it doesn't get odd and fall off. So basically, I'm just going to turn it lengthways and I'm going to shove it down in there. Now I might need to, uh, you know, the stick's going to float, so I might have to push it down in there a little bit. But really what I want it to do is to turn sideways down here in this container. And I want it to catch on the lips there, but I also need to be careful that you can see that it's popping right back up off. And I don't want to get halfway picked up with this bottle and then have this fall out. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to make my little spot in the snow here where I'm going to set my bottle down first, make it a little easier. I'm going to push this twig back down in there. This is where it's important too to, like I said, to have it in the center of your twig. So when you pick this up, that it goes off to the center. You want to still be careful. Remember that water's really hot in there, so you don't want to splash it on you. So, now another thing you can do, take my other little stick here. You know, I'm just going to hold on here just to balance it a little bit too. I'm going to lift this over. There I go. I set it down in the snow. I'm going to pack some snow around it to help it cool down a little quicker. And you may have to probably leave this in there until your water's cool enough because if it's caught on the edges, it's going to be hard to get up out of there. So, there you go. We collected some water in our steel container out of a stream and we brought it over to fire and we purified it. Now this water's good for drinking once it cools down. Uh, some people don't like the taste of it when it's uh, after it's been boiled. One thing you can do, you can put your lid back on it or your cap back on it and you can shake it up because really some of the problem with the boiled water is you boiled the oxygen out of the water and so if you put your lid on, shake it up, you're going to aerate it and you're going to get some more air back into there. Another thing you could do you could take some charcoal from your fire, just a small piece, put in there, shake it up in there. Um, you can take the big piece back out, but the charcoal will also help at, bring some flavor back to the water. For me, I don't mind. I found I don't mind drinking the boiled water. And if you're thirsty, you're not going to mind it either. So, okay, hang in there. We're going to have some more videos on some how to get some water when you're out in the woods. Okay, thanks for watching.